Always great to catch up with Dean Evans from Winning Edge Investments on a Friday morning. Dino, hello to you. Yeah, good morning, Gareth. And, uh, yeah, what an exceptional day. Uh, Derby Day is one of my favourite days of the year. The Derby, the, the Coolmore, the Empire Rose, three brilliant Group 1s, and now complemented by, you know, the Golden Eagle, the Nature's Chip Stakes, and the Cracker Card at Rose Hill as well. It's just... um. It's a real feast for horse racing fans. Yeah, it doesn't get much better. And at Flemington, unfortunately, I think we'll be racing on a soft seven. There's been a lot of rain in Melbourne over the last 48 hours. And it's clearing, I think, this afternoon. And hopefully it doesn't arrive on Saturday. But I think you can work around a soft seven. and It'll be a good track in Sydney. So let's have a look at these features. And we'll start off with the VRC Derby. And you've got Sharp and Smart at Flemington, of course. The Derby, Sharp and Smart at 340. Barclay Square at 340. Mr. Maestro, $6. Um, Pericles at $7.50. Then we go down to Maramassa at $16. And uh, next best in the market, Distrustful of Water, around $31 with Bet365, which is a fascinating runner for Paul Pruska. How do you see this year's Derby, Dino? Yeah, look, nine of the nine of the last eleven winners have been have been fifth up or, or further in their prep. It's, it's, it's obviously a, a tough staying test. Uh, the twenty five hundred metres for the young three year olds, so you need to have that fitness in your legs. Um, and, and horses who had a, had a few career starts, at least five, um, is important too. And there's a few that uh, building a couple in the market, such as uh, you know, Pericles and, and Miramar, so who are pretty likely race. Um, and I find those horses just don't quite usually have the seasoning uh, to win it. Um, not a lot of speed in this race, so I don't think you're going to want to be a mile back. Um, it was like Sharp and Smart, I think, actually going to be able to settle, you know, pretty close, sort of in, in fourth or fifth, given the speed here. Um, and horse like Berardino and Berkeley Square are probably not going to get too far back. Uh, look, I'm, I'm very keen on, on Sharp and Smart again. You know, I was very keen on them last week, and he, he won for us at a, you know, really nice price, seven or eight dollars. Um, he, he raced wide, no cover throughout, uh, three deep, and, and was unbalanced twice in the straight when hampered, and yet still won. You know, I think if he'd got, if he'd got a clear, uh, clean run, you know, would cover and uh, and not knock around the straight. He probably won one by three or four lengths. So I do think he's he's clearly the one to beat here. Um, I think the danger is Mr. Maestro from the Forsman Yard, uh, of the Andrew Forsman, guided by the great Murray Baker, who who knows how to win derbies all around Australia. Um, you know, he's won the last three starts. Um, has been strong on the line and, and all of them. Um, and I think he's shaping up, you know, by Sabah Beal to really run that, that derby trip out. So, uh, you know, I've got Sharp and Smart as the, as the, the one to beat, absolutely. And, um, but I think Mr. Maestro is going to prove, um, you know, a, a, real, a real threat. Yeah, can't wait for the derby. Looks like the Kiwis, according to Dean Evans, will be dominating proceedings there. In that classic at uh, Flemington. So you get about 360 at the moment for Sharp and Smart in uh, the Derby at Flemington. Race number six on the program at Flemington will be the Coolmore for the three year old sprinters. And Jack and O's at $5 with Bet365. Best of Bordeaux, 19. So Jardin at 23. Lofty Strike at 23. Natuno at 23. Bonus Notches at $8, Grand Impact at $10, Economics at $12, and then we go down to Cool and Gatter at $8, In Secrets, the favourite, the filly for Cadolphin at three sixty. It's always a fascinating race, Dino, but this is an intriguing contest for mine because you've got horses like Sir Jardin on the quick backup that was impressive at the Valley. Lofty Strike's got plenty of ability. Natuno, Tony Golan believes that he can bounce back on a dry track. You've got Grand Impact, the price and Kent Jr. camp don't know how good he is. And then you've got the Proven Gallopers so far and In Secret that's been dominant and Jack and O that was fourth in an Everest. Um, I can't wait for this race. Yeah, absolutely cracking race. With, um, you know, and four lines sort of coming from everywhere. Um, you know, historically, Barry has one to six. Uh, been three winners in the last 11 years and seven to 15, eight winners. So, Usually they come sort of down the outside and, and the early mail that I've got, um, and still waiting for a track walker to, to talk to me uh, later today, but is that pick will be down the outside again. Uh, seven Colts and, and three fillies have won um, of late. For me, uh, the form that, that usually holds up the best in this race is the Golden Rose form. Um, you know, historically, uh, there's just been a litany of winners coming from there. And I, and I do feel that, um, you know, on, on the ratings and speed that, the, the the golden rose form and those horses 
um, do profile uh, best for me. You know, Jack and O, uh, he, he was really strong first up on the McNeil, then he, you know, won the Golden Rose, which was just such an impressive win for mine, second up of a 28-day break. Um, and then he was fifth in the Everest. Uh, you know, he's only beaten less than two lengths. You know, Home Affairs was has been about eight lengths and Everest and came out and absolutely bolted in this race uh, last year. So for me, that's the premier form line for this with Jack and I. And I do think the danger is, is in secret, who, you know, was very impressive winning the run to the Rose and second beaten ahead in the Golden Rose uh, by Jack and O and has, you know, been set for this with Jay Mack aboard. And, and I just think that that form line um, is, is superior to, to everything else. There's, like you said, a lot, a lot of talented horses. Um, but when I sort of tie in some of their form lines, I, I, I'm just struggling to see... Uh, I'm struggling to see them having the speed and class of, of Jack and Owen in secret. So for me, it's, uh, it's Jack and Owen on top and, and in, in secret, the danger. Empire Rose, you've got this boom Kiwi mare, La Creek, that dominates the market. Now, she's into 2.30 with Bet365. It's been some go. She continues to be well-backed. And you've got She's Lickety Split, the fellow New Zealander, at $7 for Andrew Forsman. And then double figures for the rest, headed by Nimalee at eleven dollars and Ice Bath at fifteen. So how good is this New Zealand Adino, the Creek? Uh, looks, you know, she she rates really well. She's got Jane Mack on board. She was very very dominant um, in her Group One win in New Zealand last start, um, and you know she's come on as a four year old as well as she you know looked as a three year old where she pretty much won everything apart from the the Derby where she ran second. Um, but you know this is not a race where, um, you know, I want to be taking sort of $2.40 about a horse who has another run in Australia, has to travel. Uh, you know, the last three horses at, at $3 or under in this race have not even run a place. Um, you know, five of the winners have sort of best been between 3.80 and 8.50, and then six of the winners have best been between $13 and $41. So this race historically um, is where you can really find a roughie. You know, the mares are, are, are quite even. Um, and, and you sort of want a horse who's, who's fit, sort of third up, fourth up. Um, and the other interesting thing about the race is, is outside barriers are a huge advantage. Every single winner has been between barriers 8 and 13 over the last 11 years. Um, only four out of the, the 22 horses um, in the last 11 years that have run the Quinella have, have drawn inside seven. So it's just a race where the mares, uh, you know, that are sort of stuck on the fence in the big field really struggle. And so, you know, I'm looking for something that can sweep home um, out wide. Uh, you know, three-year-olds have a great record. So I think she's Lickety Split who, who won the Edward Manifold and then third in the Thousand Guineas. That type of form usually holds up really well here. Uh, so she has to be a good chance. Uh, you know, Daisy's, I think, the really underrated mare. Won the Group 2 stocks uh, stakes two starts back. She was wide no cover last start. So I think she's sort of a figure run. Um, and I, I think there's horses like, uh, you know, Kissing All Four Cheeks, um, Shalo, Yearning, Elusive Express, you know, and some of these runners sort of 40, 50 to 1 that are going to sweep home down the outside. And so for me, there's actually a race where I'm going to, um, you know, probably back, uh, you know, five or six at, um, at really big odds, you know, 40, 50 to 1. And uh, I, I think something can really swoop home out wide. Um, and, you know, if La Creek uh, isn't at her best or, you know, gets hemmed up a bit um, uh, in running, then, um, then there's a whole lot of really talented bears here that are really big prices. Um, and, and for me, the profile of this race is a horse drawn out wide. It's going to swoop home um, out wide, and you know, I just, I just don't want to be taking that, uh, you know, six to four about uh, a horse in, in this race. Just quickly run through those horses you might be backing, Dino. Uh, she's lickety split, daisies, kissing all four cheeks, uh, shalo, yearning, and elusive express. All right, then I am following you in. There in the um, Empire Rose at Flemington tomorrow. Let's have a look at the Golden Eagle, the $10 million Golden Eagle. And you got Overpass with Bet365 at $21. In the Congo at $12. Valana at $17. I wish I win at $11. And then we go down to Light Infantry that continues to firm up. This has been some going to $320 now and Chain of Lightning at $6, Dino. How good is this import? Um light infantry because uh, we had a chat to Kira Ma. He said that this horse would have been really competitive in a Cox plate if there wasn't a 10 million four-year-old race to go in. Yeah, he, he looks a genuine, you know, top liner. Um, and I don't think we've had a genuine top liner run in the, in the Golden Eagle as yet. And, and yet some of the, the imports that have run have, um, you know, performed well. Um, so 
so he's sort of a different level with his two his two seconds and sort of you know French group ones um you know really standing out um I think you know the the one point is uh, is that you know he's a horse that's basically run down straight tracks his whole life so um and in sort of uh, you know generally smaller fields of of sort of eleven or less so he, he comes over here into this this mega race with twenty starters. Uh, you know, Rose Hill is, um, you know, a tighter track than uh, a Plymington or a Randwick is. So, um, uh, and although he's been training at Canterbury, um, you know, that that's what's going to be interesting. Look, I, I, I did have him rated very clearly on top, and I sort of had him at a bet at $4. Like you say, they've really steamed into him and sort of woke up this morning, and now he's three twenty, three thirty, 30 which is... Is tight, so it'll be interesting to see if he um if he if he gets back out, and I, I think he might. Um, but I do think he's, he's the one to beat at around the you know the four dollar mark. Um, when I think of the tracks playing, it's very difficult to swoop from out wide at Rose Hill when you're back and wide. So I was devastated that Fangirl drew so wide because I was I was really keen on her. I think the drying track, getting back to a good track, is the key to her. Um, you know, on good tracks. Uh, if you sort of isolate her form, you know, she won the light finger last prep, then she won the group on binary. She's really good in the in the wink states first up behind Animo. And then the tracks just got a bit too wet for her in the George Main and Epsom. Um, so, you know, they're going to need to be swooping, like I said, it's hard at Rose Hill, but if they're swooping, Fangirl, it's sort of $19 is a, a huge chance. Um, and then I think, you know, a horse like Chain of Lightning, who's just uh, you know, really seems to be doing nothing wrong. Um, in, in her career and, and is going really well. Um, you know, she also looks like a, a, a type of horse is going to map nicely on the fence there. And if it's sort of a fence day at Rose Hill, which it certainly can be a lot of the time, um, then she's going to get a really snuggly run because, uh, you know, for me, the, the speed map is just uh, insane in terms of the speed of this race. It's at a lot of in the Congo and Mr. Mostar and military experts, Lady on a Lavish Girl, they're going to go really, really crazy up front. So I do think it's going to suit something that's going to come off the speed and run over the top of them. So yeah, can't wait for the Golden Eagle, mate. It should be a beauty. I'm with you. I think light infantry will be very, very hard to beat. I've got about 35 seconds, mate. So a quick tip in the nature strip. What are you doing there? Uh, look, I do think um, I do think that lost and running. Uh, you know, I was, I was pretty devastated and run the Everest. I was, I was very, very keen on it and had some uh, big tickets going into it. So it was a bit of a shame, but I, I you know, I do think uh, that that horse is just absolutely flying. You know, really getting to his peak now. Um, I, you know, Mark Crusade is going well, but it sort of was a bit flat in this race last year. Um, you know, Mars, who I think is going to be, uh, you know, a junior and Everest contender next year. Um, uh, a private eye. Might be looking a little bit further now. They've just had a couple of runs with prep and Edward was a bit disappointing last time. So, you know, the last running sort of two dollars forty, I think um, you know, he's just sort of the, the bulletproof one that I think is gonna be pretty hard to beat. You were sensational last week. You've been brewing for us all spring here on Giddy Up Dean. Bella Nipatina and Sharp and Smart at a price for the punters out there listening to, to Giddy Up. So hopefully it be it can be another fill up over a magical day of racing tomorrow with the Eagle. And, of course, Derby Day. We appreciate your time. And, of course, our listeners head to Winning Edge Investments and then you just go to the membership page, you type in SEN, and you get 50% off for the rest of your life. And as I always say, it's the it's the best winner you'll back all weekend. Good on you, Dean. Thanks for that. Thanks, Gareth. Cheers, mate. Have a great day. Same to you. This is Dean Evans from Winning Edge Investments. Of course, today's wagering update brought to you by Bet365, the world's favourite online betting company. Gamble responsibly. Call the gambling hotline on 1-800-858-858. Bag of tips coming up next. There's a new place to get sport and racing on tap this spring, and it's in your pocket. Get all the racing action plus exclusive markets and offers with Venue Mode. For sport and racing on tap, download the new Tab app. Gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-858-858.